Welcome to Life-Giving Water Messages, where I expound upon the Word of God and through the internet deliver it to you. Today's message is entitled, Dimensions of Love, and it is based on Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Let us dive into the Word today. When I think of all of this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the Creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower you with inner strength through His Spirit. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to fully understand. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Last Saturday, we watched uh, the film Frozen, of the Disney film, Frozen, at the church I serve. That's right. We watched Frozen in July. Ooh, yeah. Now, that film is the first film that broke the, at least to my knowledge anyway, the first film that broke the Walt Disney fairy tale mode of damsel in distress is saved by the handsome Prince Charming whom she marries and they live happily ever after. You know what I'm talking about. Every Disney fairy tale from Snow White onward has been about the princess being rescued by the prince, the two getting married, and living happily ever after. We can say it was Disney's graduation from putting forward the idol of Eros, also known as romantic or erotic love in Greek. If you remember a few sermons back, we or a few messages back, we we um, we discussed this. And that graduation happened because America has since kind of sort of graduated from seeing love in an exclusively romantic kind of way and i say kind of sort of because we we've somewhat grown past it and yet even our growing past it is still stuck in it in some ways so frozen tells the tale of two sisters elsa and anna and they live in norway they're they're in the norwegian country uh up in norway Elsa, unfortunately, had a unique kind of gift. She could turn everything and anything into ice. Her her powers were so powerful that she could, if she zapped a human being with it, freeze their heart. Of which she subsequently almost did to her sister, Anna. And because of that, she hid herself away from her younger sister, so that she wouldn't harm her. Of course, as an adult, I mean, throughout her childhood, she kept trying to connect with Elsa, Anna did. Uh, But as an adult, Anna sought that in a romantic interest. Anna was left throughout her childhood and uh, throughout, um, even as a a teenager and and a, a budding young adult, Anna or Anna was uh, feeling rejected and in need of love, and and as an adult, Anna sought that in a romantic interest, but eventually found out that true love was not to be found there, at least not for her. 
Rather, without giving any of the specifics away, and honestly, who hasn't seen Frozen by now, but without giving any of the specifics away, she comes to realize that true love is in the sacrificial, selfless love she had for her sister Elsa, who is the Snow Queen. Still, having summarized the gist of love in Frozen, it is plain to see that the writers of that film don't quite have true love measured out. Not quite. Why, you ask? Why not, you ask? Well, I will let Jesus answer that question in Matthew chapter 5, verses 46 through 48. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now, if you recall, if you've seen Frozen, the the love of uh, Anna and Elsa are shown to be true love, and that's a beautiful thing, and indeed in the context of that story, it was true love. But did she show love to the bad guy? The guy who nearly destroyed her and her sister and the kingdom of Arendelle? Uh, well, maybe you could say in some ways, because uh, they don't go as far as other movies where, you know, uh, that they don't go as far as other movies do in terms of... Uh, loathing and beating up on the bad guy but certainly there seems to be no love lost between Anna and the bad guy or Elsa and the bad guy and uh, so again without giving the specifics of who the bad guy is or how that plays out we can at least say that uh, the love the true love that is displayed in Frozen are is really between Elsa and her sister, Elsa and the one wh whom Elsa would love, which is Anna. And it's between Anna and her sister Elsa, Anna and the one whom Anna loves, her sister. So, uh, so sisterly love is not an uncommon thing. Now, not every family has it, but still, what reward is there, Jesus asks, if you love those who love you? What reward is there if you love those even the the tax collectors would love their own families in our scripture today the apostle calls us to know the dimensions of love he prayed in ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 that we have the power to understand how wide how long how high and how deep God's love is. And we Christians think we have a handle on this love stuff, right? I mean, we've read it all before in the Bible. And for those who don't know love, don't know God, for God is love. And, and Jesus, how much did Jesus love us? Well, he stretched out his hands and said, this much you know and we have all of these euphemisms and metaphors and christianese phrases that uh express all of our understanding of god's love we even tell people that we want to love on them whatever that means and we we tell people that that uh they will know us by our love so we we christians think we have a handle on this love stuff don't we it is because we think, and I want you to hear this, it is because we think we have a handle on it. It is because we think that we understand what love is and that we have a handle on it that we show how much we truly don't have a handle on it at all. Here is the secret, brothers and sisters. Love does not come from me. 
It does not come from you. It cannot come from the President of the United States of America or from the House of Representatives or from the Senate, it, nor can it come from humanitarians or human secularists or uh, uh, hu humanitarian organizations. Love does not come from pastors. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in Dr. Seuss's Green Eggs and Ham. Love does not come in a box. It does not come with a fox. It does not come here or there. It does not come anywhere. Love does not come on a train. It does not come on a plane. I do not want... No, you know, you get the point. Anyway, love does not come from pastors, nor does it come from churches, nor charitable organizations, nor the government, nor uh, anything you can think of. It doesn't come from our hearts, as we would like to think. If we look to those things for our model of love, if we look to those things as the source and the root of our love, and or if we look to ourselves for love, we will merely be looking at idols. Rather, as the scripture tells us today, rather love comes from God. And apart from God, we can neither truly love, nor can we understand the dimensions of love. This is the beauty of God's grace. God's grace has given us the ability to not only accept God and to love God and to accept God's love, but it gives us the ability to live into God's love and to live God's love out in our lives. It gives us the ability to love God to love ourselves, to love others. But God is the source of love, no one else. And our ability to love is rooted in God. Love comes from God. And apart from God, we can neither truly love nor can we understand, even remotely understand, the dimensions of love. Notice, notice the apostle does not even tell you what those dimensions specifically are. He just merely prays that God give us such power to love and that God give us the wisdom to understand love and the desire to be rooted in it. The challenge for us, my brothers and sisters, the challenge for us, friends, is to fully submit ourselves to God, who is love. It's not about being perfect, not at all, but about being perfected in God's love through our faith in Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You might be wondering, how do I know then if I'm truly loving? Good question. Well, I want to leave you with this quote from C.S. Lewis. And he has this to say, and I quote, The rule for us is perfectly simple. Do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbor. Act as if you did. As soon as we do this, we find one of the greatest secrets. When you are behaving as if you loved someone, you will presently come to love him or her. Let us submit ourselves to God and begin to, by the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit, act out God's love and be molded in its dimensions, which are, by the way, incomprehensible and unlimited and un. Con conditional. Let us submit ourselves to God and begin to live, uh, begin to, by the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit, act out God's love and be molded in its dimensions, which far surpass our understanding. And that love, my friends, is incomprehensible and unlimited and unconditional. All in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we just thank you for challenging us in this message. Lord, we can't comprehend what your love is. And we, no matter how much we try to be people who love and to be good people, quote unquote, good people, and to do the things that we think we ought to be doing, Lord, we fail at that miserably. By our own power, we are just incapable of truly loving. It doesn't mean we don't we can't love here and we can't love there, but as far as truly loving as your son did as as your son does, as far as truly living into love as you are, we cannot do it by our own power. But Lord, you are perfecting us and leading us toward your love and leading us to, uh, to uh, and guiding us into the world to lead others toward your love. And so we ask that you fill us, Lord. We ask that you fill us and we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray. And I would like to invite you all to pray this with me right now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So I would like to thank you for tuning in to this week's uh, uh, Life Giving Water message. Again, the title was Dimensions of Love, and uh, it was based off of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. I'd like to invite you uh, back uh, to tune into next week's message called Growing Up. Again, we're continuing on in Ephesians, and I look forward to uh, to to. Uh, having you tune in and join me for that for that podcast in the meantime i uh i just want to thank you and let you know how much i appreciate you how much i care for you and even though i may not know all of you by name how much i am truly praying for you and for all who are my brothers and sisters in christ and so i just want again thank you and i just want to say god bless you be a blessing to others. Go in peace.